Hello and welcome to this edition of Betting People. I'm very pleased to be back um, following the footsteps of the brilliant Simon Knott and I'm very happy to give you a brilliant guest, um, somebody who is a real icon of mine in the political betting world. He's on the other side of the world to me, he's across the pond, but I'm extremely happy to have the host of Star Spangled Gamblers, the founder of Star Spangled Gamblers, Alex Keeney, otherwise known as Keen Dog to those of us on Twitter. How are you? Uh, I'm doing well. Icon, that's kind of a loaded term. Uh, what is it, like the Madonna and the child is the icon here? No, no, no. Um, I- icon is a good thing. It's fandom. F- think Taylor Swift. Think of Swift. Oh, she's the best, by the way. She's. Uh, t- I dare you to tell me that there's a bigger star in the world or a better star. No. No, no. Um, I, I'm going to get absolutely monstered by the Minaj people in the Bay High for that, but no. Um, <laughs> anyhow. Yeah, yeah, the, and the Adele people too. Oh, God, the Adele people, yes. So both sides of the pond. Um, a good start to this interview. Um, right. Just quickly, actually, because I um, did some D, did some research, and prior to founding Star Spangled Gams, we're going to talk lots about um, physical betting and strategies. You were a marketing executive but who are you a marketing executive for i think people will know this person um i like do i just say it is that the way this works yeah say it go just, on. we just tell the truth here yeah we, we we tell the truth here on betting people go on i worked for jordan belfort the real wolf of wall street how in the world did you end up doing that uh it well it's um listen, like whoever tells you, you shouldn't just do things for the sake of doing them is completely lying to you. Uh, I uh, frankly, my understanding from my perspective working there was that I kind of got the job because I had a podcast called Star Spangled Gamblers that was um, putting, you know, idiotic degenerate political content out on the internet. And there was a specific business that he was interested in at the time. And for some reason, it was sort of like a proof of concept that I could, you know, make a podcast and talk about things in a stupid, idiotic way. And, uh, and uh, it turns out that there's a business in that. So um, uh, believe it or not, it was just making dumb content for the internet was kind of how it came to pass. A truly modern fairy tale. What was it like working for him? Um, I mean, I don't want to talk out of school, but he's, he's, He's a genius, um, and uh, he's a lot like the guy in the movie. Fair enough. Um, we might circle back to that later, but just moving on to Star Spangled Gambler. So, sort of, how did you come up with the idea of you know making your? Well, can we can we tell the people what it is? Yes, you can tell the people what it is. Okay, 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 okay. So, um, Star Spangled Gamblers is um, the global hub of political gambling uh, degenerate knuckleheads. Like myself, uh, William, you're a little bit more polished, a little bit more refined than uh, some of the people that we feature on the show. But there is a community of people. I like to say that we're the outsiders who beat the insiders at their own game. And we pool all of their knowledge and all of their insights in one place, starspangledgamblers.com or the YouTube or the Twitter or whatever. And um, we just cover the news, but we cover the news through the eyes of people who bet on it. That's what we do. So um, I think we've got a great thing going. I never would have met you if it wasn't for Star Spangled Gamblers. Wouldn't have met a lot of guys on the other side of the pond, just the legends. You know, you guys, like you guys are the ones who built this business. We're just, you know, making dumb YouTube videos about it. It's a beautiful ecosystem. Uh, and speaking of that business, um, how did you get into political betting or, or political training? Because over there, um, you know, fixed odds isn't yet nearly as big as it is here. You're on the road to legalization, but it's mainly predicted and Kaloshi and I forget the, the the sort of crypto exchange that there is. Uh, poly market, poly market. Poly market, yeah. Yeah. Um, Explain how predictive it works quickly uh, for those. Um, I think it's kind of like smarkets over there, right? Are we yeah. allowed to talk about smarkets on a star, star sports podcast? Go for it. Uh, so it's it's That's like a it. stock market. So it's denominated, you know, what, zero cents to a dollar. Maybe another metaphor would be like options trading, um, whatever. Like today, I think the odds are 80% that this big, dumb spending bill of Joe Manchin's is going to pass Congress. It was at 60 cents this morning, but some news came out. So, uh, you know, the, the price of it happening went up. Um, I don't know. Is this, is this an uncommon thing um, in the UK? I mean, it's kind, of, it's kind of uncommon in the US, to be honest. No, uh, it's reasonably common over here. We 
just have exchanges to trade them on. And also, to be fair, some people will just be sharp and they'll jump on fixed odds for it. Fixed yeah. odds change an awful lot like exchanges do. Um, I guess the sense is that if you want to do your direct trading, you've got to have your multiple wages. But Right, right, right. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So a little more, like a little bit more dynamic, but also it's a little harder to explain to people what political gambling is because, you know, like first you have to tell them that it exists, then you have to tell them that it's legal. But then when they like start asking you for odds and you're like, well, it's, you know, 33 cents that Joe Biden wins the presidential election in 2024, they're like, what? 30, like 33 cents? What is like, they, they, they just look at you very confused. To be fair, you can get the same thing here with fractals. Um, do you ever not just go to them and say it's the percentage? You know, it, it's a thirty-three percent chance or something. You know, I sort of stay out of it. I I feel like um, you know, content makers and participants. So I would include myself. I guess I would include you too. Although you kind of work for the man a little bit over there. Mm. Um, but you know, our job is to sort of build a culture, and a culture can sustain a business. But you know, the the hard choices of marketing and um you know the tech product like that's that's their problem that's not my problem my problem is just to uh make it fun and um so that's what we do at star spangling gamblers we make it fun and we um make it profitable too for uh you know those who put in the time speaking of putting in the time just wanted to ask you is is that your edge you know is because i've been listening to some stuff earlier and i've been on star spangled gamblers and over there with predicted etc it can just sometimes be literally putting in more time however much sort of insights you might think you have or whatever can be a, a really big edge on any given market yeah i mean i think that any work you do is rewarded or at least any work you do over a certain amount i mean there are any exchange is always going to have the people who just want to bet 100 bucks on trump or bet 50 bucks on you know bernie sanders or something like that um I don't think I work nearly as hard as some people do. I mean, the really, really great traders who are making, you know, in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, uh, they're playing on a different level. My job is to be almost as good at them and to figure out how to, you know, create funny content that can help other people sort of, you know, piece it together in their own brains. So, um, you know, that's what I'm really the best at. Uh, what other people are the best at is finding just insanely finite edges in uh, questions of our politics that most people never even think about, but these people do and they make a lot of money. Um, how much trading do you yourself do? I limit myself a little bit because now that, you know, Star Spangled Gamblers is something more than just what like my mom and my aunts, you know, read out of obligation and like people are actually wagering money, you know, with this as a, as a reference point. I try and keep my total handle under about ten thousand dollars at any given time, um, uh, but uh, I'm also scared. You know, I'm a weenie. I'm a big weenie, and um, when I read about people, you know, going to the, the casino on Super Bowl Sunday and you know laying a million dollars on the table, I don't even. I would have a heart attack. I would die before I even, you know, like took my betting ticket. So um, it's convenient. Let me say that. Yeah, I mean, a confession here, me, me too. But again, the staking sort of all relative. Um, somebody actually asked me, I, I told somebody that I was doing this interview and they asked me a really good question, I thought, which was just sort of, do you think predict it? And I'm, I'm asked this question sort of generally. Um, actually, two questions. Number one, do you think predict it is a particularly like clued in or like sharp base of people? That's a very generic question. And then... Um, do you think that political gamblers sort of as a whole are, are sort of sharp um, and, and maybe a bit sharper than other sports, you might say? I, I'm comparing it to a sport here. It's easy. Yeah. Um, well, I'll be honest with you. I think, um, you know, like you said, in the States, we have three exchanges that operate. Um, if I were to make the perfect exchange, I would probably take, you know, a little bit from Predicted, a little bit from Calshi, and a little bit from Polymarket. But uh, I'm not in charge. And, the, you know, it's very tightly scrutinized and regulated by the government in the United States. So to some extent, you know, no one's really allowed to build a perfect product. So um, I, I would love to change things. There are a lot of things in my life I would like to change. I'd like to weigh 10 pounds less. Um, but I'm not uh, in a position and don't really want to you know, criticize people too much um, you know, who have to really weigh these things. Um, as for uh, political betters in the United States, um, 
you know, well, what did you think with the first time you heard of political gambling? Like, what did you think the average better was going to be? Um, I was a bit naive to it. I thought initially, and I guess I still do. Well, actually, no, I, I don't think it's anymore. But I, I thought initially the average person would be like far more clued up. And I think it's a bit of one and a half dozen of the other. It's like six on one side, half a dozen of the other, because you get some markets where your average person is likely to have, usually because we, we do a lot of requested markets as well, right? The person, if they're requesting it, they've already got their angle in. Right. But then you have general elections and presidential elections over here, and money begins flooding in for all sorts of reasons, you know, and, and that can be just simply stuff like, and I've done this in the past, like emotional hedging, right? Right, right. Uh, I don't want this outcome to happen, but I, so I can chuck 20 or whatever on this. And at least if I have to drown my political sorrows or whatever, I get a bit of money out of it. So, right, so right. It, it depends, I think, on the size of the market. The bigger the market, usually the better the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. So I sort of, um, I don't know if I expected, but I definitely hoped that political gambling would be full of just huge meatheads who just were looking for, you know, one more thing to drink beer and argue with their friends about. But uh, and those people do exist, by the way. Shout out Zoltar, shout out Blitz the Tweet God. These are some great betters in America. Um, but for the most part, I, I think that it's kind of like, I always like to offend my audience here and say that uh, it's very heavily kind of beta males who have the competitive drive of alpha males. So like maybe they weren't that good at sports, um, but they still like winning. And um, so those people, um, maybe they weren't the best footballers, but um, uh, they like winning and they they do it with their brains. So uh, uh, very highly educated, uh, almost exclusively men, uh, extremely smart. Um, and oftentimes they possess maybe one or two glaring blind spots. Uh, and that's where your kind of market advantage exists. If you sort of understand traders and where they mess up and frankly, understand yourself and um, where you are prone to mess up in a wagering pool. Um, do you keep a record of your trades and your bets, a sort of profit and loss? Do you keep a profit and loss? Um, Pratik keeps a profit and loss for the podcast. Um, I, do, we, are, do we dare introduce another character another at this point? You'll hopefully have on... Um, d- down the line very soon. But uh, no, so profit and loss for the podcast. And um, what mistakes did you make when you first started doing this that y- you managed to cut out? Or what, what sort of early basic errors did you make, do you think? I think? I think the hardest thing to learn for me, and I think probably widely for a lot of traders, like I'm still working on it, is um, what is something worth? Like, what is it actually worth? Like, you think... Um, you know, you think Liz Trust is going to be the uh, the PM? Well, like, how sure are you? You know, are you fifty percent sure? Are you ninety percent? How you know? So um, that is the thing that I have had to get better at over time. And there's a second part of that that's hard to learn, which is um, how much time do you have to make your buy or to make your sale? So, for example, today in the United States, uh, people who are political junkies noticed that a constitutional amendment in the state of Kansas. Do you think, do people in the UK know that the state of Kansas exists? I reckon they're political best as well. I right. would be confident elsewhere. Right. Maybe if they'd seen like the Wizard of Oz or something like that. Mm, that's true. Could be. Judy Garland. Okay. All right. So the state of Kansas just voted down by a wide margin, uh, a ballot to remove abortion as a constitutional right in the state. It's kind of wordy, but the point is, is that a very Republican state just absolutely nuked this amendment. And the way that the markets have interpreted this is that the Democrats who are thought to be walking into a slaughterhouse this November for the election might actually have a chance of winning it because this was just so unforeseen to many. Well, here's something I messed up that I still mess up. What I messed up was I've been holding the Democrats to control the Senate for months and I just gave up on it a week or two ago. I thought, man, like, you know, Joe Biden can't get out of his own way. These idiots can't get anything done. I'm just like, all I'm going to do is lose money. So I sold out of that position at a moderate loss. Uh, But if I just held on to it for another week or two and really kind of trusted my initial conviction that at some point the Democrats would get it right, I would be sitting on a lot more money. Uh, I say that as a way of maybe representing all traders who really wrestle with this, which is, you know, how much time do I have to exit this market? How much time do I have to get into this market before it runs away from me? And it's still something that I struggle with. Um, And I, I would, guess that many of your listeners and maybe even yourself are the same way you know there's being right 
Mm-hmm. There's buying at the right price, and there's understanding timing. You know, these these are all different skill sets you have to develop uh, as you go along. Speaking of somebody who failed on that twice in the Tory leadership race, I absolutely understand you. Now, just quickly, two questions, two follow-up questions on that point. Um, firstly, when you sold out, were you just sort of reading the polls and the forecast? 538 is now forecasting this. I think others have followed suit. Were you looking at that hard data and thinking, okay, cut the losses? Um, and, and also, were you aware of the, the Kansas Amendment coming up? Because um, it made our news here. But, yeah. I, don't, but I, I think unless unless he was sort of really keyed up into it, wouldn't have been the first thing on the force of even I think people would have decent interest in politics in the UK. Right, right. So uh, yes and no. So first of all, I would like in that particular market, I was on the right side of it. Um, but did I take the extra step? I mean, that's the difference between good and great, right? Like good is like, okay, you make a prediction. Great is you make a prediction and then you can map it to like 15 different places where, you know, markets will respond. Did I do that? Absolutely not. I didn't do that. Um, so uh, I, I mean, I guess maybe, maybe I'm just average, KJ. No, never. I could never dream of it. Um, and anyway, thank you so much for your time. We'll be back with part two. Thank you very much for watching.